in what seems like a bleak hour after a dark year. Now is the time to hold tight to the truths we hold to be self-evident. And to hold on to the words of a preacher from Georgia, a life and lessons which have inspired a parade and peace walk that has filled D.C. streets for decades. And while we may not be able to march together today, we are on each other's side in spirit. Remembering, living, and celebrating the legacy of Dr. King. This is an ABC7 On Your Side special. Now is the time. Celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Sponsored by DC HealthLink. Welcome to a celebration of history and culture and a reminder of a man whose words are as important today as they ever were. Now is the time, celebrating the life of the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sam Ford, the D.C. Bureau Chief for ABC7 News. And with me, once again, <laughs> Denise Rollart Barnes of The Washington Informer. Thank you, Sam. So far, so good with the weather. Uh, and so we'll see how it is uh, once we get to that day. But we want to say today that we're going to hear stories from the ABC7 team members, but we're also going to hear from members of the community that make the parade and peace walk what it is every year. And we're here on Martin Luther King Avenue in Anacostia. You can probably hear the sirens. We're outside. No parade this year because of COVID, right? Right. But nevertheless, we want to celebrate the dream. Exactly, exactly. And we are going to do that today in a different way, but in great celebration and great style with so many people from our community that are going to be participating uh, in, in their own way and acknowledging the life and legacy of Dr. King. And, of course, the district was one of the first places to actually have a Martin Luther King holiday and a parade, basically, in honor of Dr. King. His impact looms large on D.C. as a setup for the uh, stage for the 1963 March on Washington. But, Sam, before Dr. King uttered those words, I have a dream, he was, he was very familiar not only with the District of Columbia, but people that lived here were familiar with him because he often came to Washington, D.C. And so ABC's Kelly Lynn is going to sit down with two women who actually came face to face with Dr. King and talk to him about the civil rights movement. Hello, hello, hello. Virginia Ali, longtime owner of Ben's Chili Bowl, recently invited me in, not for food, but for a history lesson. We were the place where so many people met. It was the early 1960s when 14th and Ewan Northwest was a bustling corridor known as Black Broadway. Civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and had a satellite office down the street. Ali recalls the conversations she had with the well-known activist when he would step into her restaurant for lunch. His demeanor was so warm, welcoming, so humble. King was planning the 1963 March on Washington where he would deliver his famous I Have a Dream speech. Even though we face the difficulties. I'm like, how can you do this? I mean, they got these dogs after you. You've been in jail and you've had to pay all the prices for this thing. How can you do this? He said, I have to. This is the 50th anniversary of the sit-in. Arlington resident and former freedom writer Joan Mulholland came face to face with King while a student at Tougaloo College in Mississippi. I ended up walking Dr. King across campus. Pleasant conversation. He was a gentleman. No big deal uh, for him. Just how, what are you studying? How do you like it here? That type of thing. Mulholland still has the paper King initialed during their brief encounter. Take me back to when you got his autograph. He spoke in the chapel, and then we crowded up around him as he came out. What does Mulholland think we should remember about the organizer and activist on his 92nd birthday? We should remember him for carrying our message to the world. That somehow this situation can and will be changed. I still have a dream. In Arlington, Kelly Lynn, ABC 7 News. Sam, this August marks 10 years since the Martin Luther King Memorial uh, joined the iconic monuments on the National Mall. 
And we sent a recent graduate from the University of Maryland, Jasmine Boyd, out to find the words of the civil rights leader and how they're kept alive today. The nation's tribute to Dr. King is a federal holiday and the statue here on the title basement. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day. The words of Dr. Martin Luther King surround a 30-foot statue of the civil rights leader. It is the newest memorial on the National Mall and a destination for tourists from his hometown of Atlanta. I just enjoy coming to the memorial. I've been here several times, um, but I, most, more than even the statue, I like the words that are written um, on the wall because it, it says a lot about who he was and how he thought. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Dr. King actually made like a great foundation um, and he built up on that foundation and so he's passed that on to us. Uh, his time was cut short, but his work is in, so we need to get to work on it. Often, they came as families. The Carlos family of Walnut, California came over after visiting the Lincoln Memorial nearby. Anton is eight years old. My mom told me that he had a very big speech at Abraham Lincoln Memorial. I wanted to bring the children, especially my son, to teach him that Dr. Martin Luther King made a lot of sacrifices. And I wanted to show him that it's not based on color, but it's based on humanity. Quality, uh, freedom, so from coast to coast, visiting the nation's capital, and they chose the memorial as a necessary stop for many reasons. And what he stood for, uh, unconditional love. MLK for sure is, you know, he's one of my heroes. How time flies. It's been 10 years since the memorial to Dr. King was opened here in Washington. With the words, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. I'm Jasmine Boyd. Dr. King once said, we are not the makers of history, but we are made of history. And in the past year, D.C.'s historic Martin Luther King Jr. Library received a facelift. Well, Richard Wright High School student Sky Ali Johnson shows us the painstaking work it took to revive the history within the library's walls. D.C. Central Library was named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shortly after he was assassinated and years before it really opened in 1972. Now, 50 years later, it's just undergone a makeover. After three years and more than a $200 million makeover, the Martin Luther King Memorial Library is slowly coming back. Today, with this iconic library, we celebrate a man whose legacy helps us keep pushing forward. The mural that took two years to paint, depicting scenes from Dr. King's crusade, has been painstakingly cleaned of 50 years of grime. The library building designed by the famous German-American architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe is celebrated as artistic as well as practical with its no-frills design. Civil rights crusaders of the 60s got the city to name it for Dr. King, who was important to Washington, as the library special collections manager tells us. He was here four days prior to his assassination at the cathedral. And ironically, King's sermon, you know, prior to his assassination here in the city alluded to that. You know, something has to give. Um, and, and after his assassination, D.C. wasn't the only city that, that just couldn't hold it in. And of the riots in 114 U.S. cities, after Dr. King's assassination in April 1968, none was worse than here in Washington, where the devastation remained for decades after. The library's Washingtoniana division is a repository of many images of Dr. King during his approximately 13 years of activism from the Montgomery bus boycott until his demise in Memphis. The library is public and serves many purposes, bringing groups of teens together. If we have more after-school programs that would do stuff like this, or more programs that would do stuff like this, it'd probably be a lot less violence in D.C. because everybody would be too busy to commit a crime. Or a teen who loves to read and says the library should be a place where you can sit and read. Well, some teenagers don't have nice places to sit at home, and they don't have a comfortable, safe place to go to, so if... They add more 
couches than teenagers would more likely want to come. Those who lobbied more than 50 years ago for this building to be named after Dr. King are as happy as it begins its second life after a makeover. Those of us who grew up under the segregated society were very proud that our movement had brought about desegregation. And so we were in a position to make demands. So any new building in the city, especially a library, right, should have his name. The library is currently closed down due to COVID. Part of the mayor's order to slowly stop the spread of the virus. But once it's over, come on down and take a look for yourself. It's amazing. I'm Sky Ali, a student from Butcher Wright Public Charter School. Still ahead in the hour, we're going to hear from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. And plus, we're going to hear the music that's always been the soundtrack of the parade. And also, Denise, we're going to walk down memory lane and look at some of the past parades and things you'll never forget. because this week, Wheels shows you the world. This is absolutely spectacular. Have a laugh with Pat and Vanna in beautiful Switzerland. Could you do that? <laughs> Tonight at 7 on ABC7. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. For a limited time, John C. Flood is offering $30 off a standard plumbing service call. Whether you're in need of regular plumbing maintenance or emergency repairs, you can trust our licensed plumbing experts. We understand that a small plumbing issue can quickly cause thousands of dollars in damage if not addressed immediately, which is why our team prides itself on its rapid response times. So schedule today and get $30 off a standard plumbing service call. And as always, if you go ahead with the recommended repairs, we'll waive the diagnostic fee. Call John C. Flood today. Make the move to Internet that's all about you. Cox Internet, only $44.99 a month for up to 150 megs for two years. You can be up and running on move-in day. You'll get reliably fast speeds with panoramic Wi-Fi included. And you can pause your Wi-Fi anytime, anywhere. Call or click today to get Internet that puts your home at the center. Cox Internet is $44.99 a month for two years for up to 150 megs. After weeks of sheltering in place with little movement and exercise, you may be experiencing leg pain, leg fatigue, leg cramps, or you may have a hard time walking. The Minimally Invasive Vascular Center in Laurel can help. We are internationally recognized for treating patients with poor circulation caused from high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure, or increasing age. Call us today or visit MIVCMD.com for more information. Stay healthy and stay safe and let us help you get moving again. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. joined now by Dr. E. Faye Williams, who is the president of the National Congress of Black Women, a champion for equal rights, and you knew Dr. King personally. I did, and to show how chronologically advanced I am, I actually met him in 1965. I know most people can't relate to that year, but it was 1965. So, first off, you know, I think everybody remembers what they were doing when this happened. I can remember I was in a little town in Kansas where I'm from watching television. They came on and said, we interrupt this program with a special news bulletin. Martin Luther King is dead. Do you remember what you were doing at that moment? Absolutely. I was driving down the Harbor Freeway in Los Angeles to my dad's house. And when that message came on, I, I could not, I just froze. And I finally was able to move myself over to the side of the road until I could recover and move on to my dad's house. How did you meet Dr. King? Well, in 1965, they had what was called the Watts Riot. I call it the Watts Revolt. But um, there was a young man who was driving, and the police attempted to arrest him. And when they attempted to arrest him, his whole family got involved. It was near his house, 
and then the, the neighborhood got uh, involved, and many people did, and there started to be uh, kind of uh, throwing things and breaking out car windows, etc. And when that happened, it started to spread all across town as people began to hear about it. And of course, the, the area was called Watts, you know, uh, in Los Angeles, South Los Angeles. And uh, they kind of revolted, uh, rioted, broke down things, um, had fires for about four days. And at the end of those four days, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King came to Los Angeles in order to try to quell what had been going on. And the first thing that he did was go through the community and observe all of the damage that had been done to the community. He came back and he met with several of the leaders, of which I was president of a group called the Black Educators. He met with other uh, community leaders. And of course we had a march. We had to have a little protest march. You know, we were way across country in Los Angeles when this uh, uh, happened. And you don't just run back and forth to the, to the south or to D.C. or what have you. It takes, you know, a few months or years before you can do that. So Dr. King came out and he uh, looked all around. He saw the damage. And when he did, he kind of took a different position than the people who had done the damage there. Uh, he didn't think that violence was the way, you know, he, he believed in nonviolence. So as he talked to us and tried to uh, negotiate things and, and, and calm things down, he uh, talked about the, the, what was happening in urban cities was different from what was happening in the South where the Southern Christian Leadership Conference had been working. But he then saw the need to bring the Southern Christian Leadership Conference to urban cities uh, because of what had happened there. Uh, he said this is different because, uh, first of all, uh, this is about inadequate housing. This is about, you know, social problems here. Uh, this is about, uh, you know, in, in workforce stuff. You get, you, people don't have jobs and that kind of so thing. So it wasn't whether Economic. you could eat at a lunch counter or not, but obviously right. different stuff. A absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it was a problem. Now, some people disagreed with that. They thought the problems were pretty, pretty similar to those that were in the South. But uh, Dr. King convinced many of us that they were a bit different in uh, some ways. So he tried to uh, mediate, negotiate. And when he came back to Washington, he uh, decided to go to President Lyndon Johnson, and there they, they formed a project, you know, to, to try to ease the problems um, with, with people. And that worked to some extent, but as you know, when you look around you and see all of the problems today, you know that it didn't totally resolve the problems. I think people still support nonviolence, and when I say people, I mean black people, because we saw just a few days ago that white people didn't care anything about nonviolence. So um, we were very happy to have had Dr. King there, and we began to follow more what was going on down south. Theirs was more about voting rights and things like that than, uh, than it was in the urban cities. So he was a frequent visitor to the West Coast? Or? No, not really. This was a, a visit he made, though, during that uh, Watts revolt or rebellion. Dick Gregory always told me, don't say, uh, don't say it was a rebellion or a revolt. He said, because for a revolt, you have to have plans. But for a riot, you just go around tearing up things. And I think that's the way Dr. King saw what had been do uh, going on in Los Angeles. It was a riot. Uh, so it became known, became known as the Watts riots. But East Coast, West Coast, uh, black folks had many of the same problems. Absolutely. I think so. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people were unhappy about that because um, they, they thought that, uh, you know, about Dr. King saying that the problems were different. Because many of the people in Los Angeles now came from down south, so they knew what the problems were. That's true. Mm -hmm. But Dr. King was, you know, a very friendly person. He didn't argue with anybody. He just calmly, in that voice that he had, you know, tried to talk with us and calm us down. And at that time, I was not chronologically advanced. I was young, and I was a community activist. And uh, I, di I didn't agree at that time with everything that he said. But I came to certainly uh, love and respect Dr. King. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. Thank you. Appreciate it. This year marks the 15th annual Peace Walk. Now, everything is virtual this year, but we are so excited to show you the ghosts of MLK parades and Peace Walks past. You're going to see the committee. You're going to see Peace Walkers. You're going to see people that have um, come on out and taken their time to march up the street to honor the life and legacy of Martin Luther King. So check it on out, y'all. Total sunshine. Oh, she is so ready, y'all. <laughs> We 
marching on up the street now. We're getting ready. We visualize Martin Luther King Avenue. I'm E.C. Street from 93.9 WKY. <laughs> the classic cars are coming right now. Kanye. A parade's pass. Yes, indeed. Well, I'm so hopeful that 2022 will have not echoes, not ghosts, but actual people parading up Martin Luther King Avenue in Southeast Washington, D.C. I'm Miss Total Sunshine. I'm so happy to share these clips with you. From the March on Washington to last summer's commitment march, the dream of Dr. King is alive and well here in Washington. And ahead, we follow the march towards justice from 1963 to the Black Lives Matter movement. And we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a COVID vaccine coverage, ABC 7's on your side, answering your questions every day, every newscast, on air and online, ABC 7, on your side. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. Hi, folks. Joe Namath here, and if you're on Medicare, this is important. You're now entitled to eliminate co-pays and get dental care, dentures, eyeglasses, prescription coverage, in-home aids, unlimited transportation, and home-delivered meals, all at no additional cost. Plus, your zip code may have coverage with a give-back benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every month. I call to get dental, transportation, meals, and the give-back benefit. With this virus situation, I call to get everything I'm entitled to. I couldn't believe I was missing out on so many benefits. With the uncertainty of the virus, you need to get everything you're entitled to. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare coverage helpline. You can too. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-683-2200. That's 1-800-683-2200 now. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. The Black Panthers are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. These ain't no terrorists. Listen to Black Messiah, rated R, in theaters and streaming exclusively on HBO Max, February 12th. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. You know, Denise, I was thinking about Dr. Martin Luther King's name. You know, actually, his name was Michael when he was born, but his father, Daddy King, as they call him, Martin Luther King Sr., went to Germany to a Baptist conference, was impressed by Martin Luther, came back and changed his name. And, of course, he had to change his son's name, too, so they became Martin Luther King Sr. and Jr., which is... Interesting, different. interesting 
But obviously, Martin Luther King had a big impact. In 1963, thousands marched on Washington for civil and economic rights for African Americans. All these years later, that push for equality took on a new form, Black Lives Matter movement against police brutality. And after a summer of unrest following the death of George Floyd, a commitment march was held at the Lincoln Memorial. This time, Dr. King's 12-year-old granddaughter proclaimed the youth would fulfill her grandfather's dream. And all around Washington, you can see reminders that the work for justice continues. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! In many ways, it is the civil rights movement of the 21st century. And Black Lives Matter signs are large and small around D.C. National City Christian Church put up banners because their smaller signs had been stolen. Late spring, after George Floyd died, Black Lives Matter activists and supporters staged numerous demonstrations near the White House. Conflicts with federal authorities and President Trump, the mayor pushing back, naming the area of conflict Black Lives Matter Plaza. What's the philosophy of BLM, Black Lives Matter? We asked DC Corps organizer Anthony Lorenzo Green. Declare that you will no longer tolerate, you know, Black lives being cut down on the streets. You will no longer tolerate white supremacy. Many supporters are white, most in some cities. Green says in D.C. the core members like himself are all black, but have white allies. More recently, pro-Trump opponents like Proud Boys and others came to D.C., got into fights with BLM supporters, burned Black Lives Matter signs of several downtown churches who promptly replaced them. Green and other BLM adherents say they were appalled at what the opposition groups did to the Capitol. They want to go and storm the Capitol saying they built that place? Actually, they didn't. My ancestors did. Let's be clear. You know, they want to get mad the day after uh, Georgia gets their first black senator and their first Jewish senator, and all of a sudden they trash in the Capitol? That's not a coincidence. Not a coincidence at all. He said he was not surprised that among the rioters were off-duty police. But as the BLM movement continues, he has other thoughts. The running thought amongst so many D.C. natives is Black Lives Matter signs replace black people. Still to come, Dr. King called him the boy from Troy. As we celebrate Dr. King's legacy, we have to pay attention to the young man who became his protege, Congressman John Lewis. And still we see how DC kept the go-go music alive, even during a pandemic. Diane Lewis, board chair of DC Health Benefit Exchange, joins me today. Welcome, Ms. Lewis. Thanks so much for your time today. What is DC Health Link, and how does that connect to DC Health Benefit Exchange Authority? Thank you so much. I welcome the opportunity to be on today. DC Health Benefit Exchange Authority uh, was developed uh, and initiated in 2013. We operate and manage DC HealthLink, providing the online marketplace for health insurance in the District of Columbia for small businesses and for individuals and families. And what options do you have available to residents, particularly is treatment for COVID-19 covered? Yes, COVID-19 is covered. We have worked with our sister agencies and with insurers to uh, provide the opportunities for health insurance that will cover and not uh, be interrupted in any way for treatment and for testing. And what is the deadline to enroll? The deadline to enroll is January 31st. We encourage everyone to go to dchealthlink.com and Sign, at, sign up and get insured. So if someone misses the deadline, is there an opportunity for them to still get coverage? Absolutely. They can be uh, covered uh, on all insurers. Uh, we have worked with the insurers uh, since the uh, pandemic to make sure that no insurance is terminated and that residents of the District of Columbia can sign on until the health emergency ends. And Ms. Lewis, where do we go for more information? For more information, everyone in the District of Columbia, please go to dchealthlink.com 
and get insured. More information is on your screen. Ms. Diane Lewis, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Last week, Sarah Fames. A rose ceremony interrupted, and tonight, I have real feelings for you. A love story disrupted. Some of the women are just really cruel. I never want to see your face again. Go home, go home, go home. All new Bachelor, ABC Tonight. You're watching an ABC7 On Your Side special. Now is the time. Celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. In 2020, we lost a number of giants, including giants of the civil rights movement. Congressman Elijah Cummings, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice with the Supreme Court, and of course, the last of the big six, that was Congressman John Lewis. Yes, and ABC's Carl Willis takes a look back at the relationship between Dr. King and the man he called the boy from Troy, Alabama. The life and legacy of a civil rights icon alive and well, from Congress to this campus in Springfield. There is a sense of pride uh, that our students have. They've spoken a lot about not always being the case. The school's name converted, thanks in part to a student movement, from Lee, honoring a Confederate general, to John R. Lewis High School, honoring the late congressman, a champion of equal rights, and a protege of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Lewis's legacy as a changemaker continuing even after his passing. We must cry and we all must cry together that we want our freedom and we want it now. Taking initiative as a recent high school graduate, Lewis wrote to MLK. King wrote back and sent Lewis a ticket to come to Atlanta and called him the boy from Troy. Energized by King, Lewis would fashion himself as one of the most courageous young leaders of the student movement. A fire burned in him that continues to inspire future generations. Our students were not afraid to speak up and to share with a lot of different adults in a lot of different settings. Hey, this is our school and this is our community. And uh, we want someone who is going, you know, we want our new name to be something that's going to represent who we are as a community. Lewis was quoted as saying Dr. King was, quote, the person who, more than any other, continued to influence my life, who made me who I was. He was just 23 years old when he delivered a speech criticizing the federal government's inaction before Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Let us not forget that we are involved in a serious social revolution. From his time as a freedom rider in the early 60s, challenging segregation on public buses, to the landmark protests at sit-ins across the South, Lewis was threatened, beaten, and arrested some 40 times for what he liked to call good trouble. But he never gave up on those whose trouble was not so good. ABC7 was there in 2016 when Lewis visited the D.C. jail to speak with some of the juvenile inmates. You must never get lost in a sea of despair. And even when he was given a grave prognosis back in December 2019, after learning that he had pancreatic cancer, Lewis vowed to keep fighting. One of his final public appearances was a visit to Black Lives Matter Plaza with D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. His funeral procession would make one last trip to the site just weeks later. An unlikely hero, raised on a farm in Troy, Alabama, by his parents who were sharecroppers, coming up through the Jim Crow South, to lying in state at the U.S. Capitol, showered with an outpouring of love. A former student of Dr. King, who had become an icon himself. Carl Willis, ABC 7 News. <laughs> is the heartbeat of D.C., and it's a tragedy that we won't have the, the bands out for the MLK parade this year. Backyard, junkyard, and of course, you know, Ron Moten has been basically Mr. Go-Go here in the city, That's promoting it. Now Go-Go is what the official music of D.C. because of him. Exactly. And so he couldn't do it in the parade this year, so he had an idea around Christmas time, and he's going to tell us about it. Normally, for MLK Day, we do two floats, two go-go floats, and it's the highlight of the parade. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we're not doing it this year, but we did something special with our community partners, and we did the Go-Go Santa Express. So music has the power to bring joy and happiness to people uh, throughout history. And to see the smiles on the little ones' face all the way up to the old women who came outside dancing was something that words cannot express. And then to see the smile on their face when they got the gifts, um, it was something special. Uh, Monica Ray 
uh, uh, worked with the uh, U.S. Marines, and they brought two big buses out. And the Marines went to every neighborhood with us, followed us, and they got off the bus, and they helped us uh, distribute with Pure the Streets over 7,500 gift bags to various communities. It's good because you got to see everybody come together um, as one. Well, go go is a hot beat of Washington, D.C. Whether you've been here for 40 years or you've been here for two years, one thing you will find out is that you can't mute out go go. <laughs> Father of the King's birthday and the unity and, and, and the happiness that is brought to our community since the reemergence of the parade, which Channel 7 and the Washington Forum helped bring back. Such a great time honoring our music, our culture, and seeing those smiles on all those children's faces. But even more, we cannot wait until 2022 when we bring back the MLK Parade. My name is Ron Moten, and I'll see you next year. Speaking of music, the Baloo High School Marching Band is the crown jewel of the D.C. public schools. They have performed from coast to coast. But, Denise, this year, because of COVID and no parade, the drums and the horns are silent. Yeah, it's really sad um, because we know that over the years, the folks would stay out till the bitter end of the parade. It's freezing out here. but they We always put them at the end because That's everybody right. would leave. If we didn't. <laughs> Don't go bands too, but they definitely wanted to see uh, the Blue Knights. So band member Armand Thornton shows us that despite it all, the musicians are keeping the Blue marching band spirit alive. And Blue Band, we love what we do. Marching, dancing, and playing the MLK Avenue. But unfortunately this year, we can't do that due to COVID. It's been 10 months since drummers like me have seen our drums. Who ever thought that in March, when we were told um, at the you know when the bell rang at the end of the day that we would not be back in the school? Masked and social distance, we sat outside our school and thought back. My favorite parade is Mazda, it's the Mazda the King parade because like it, it's fun. It's like the, all parades are fun, but like to see people that you know, like and see the community just coming out of their houses and cheering for you and like cheering you on, and, like helping motivate you to keep doing better. It's like being with another part of your family. It's like having another family. Being with them, it's like you missing another part of yourself. It was cold and fun. Everybody would cheer us on and be like, oh, it's Baloo. We're the little band that could, you know, dreams. And that's what basically what Martin Luther King was all about. You know, I have a dream. And I remember when I became the band director, to be able to march in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Tournament of Roses, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, you know, it's, 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 it's a dream come true, you know, and all because of a dream. And because of that, you know, a, a lot of students have the opportunity to be on a flight for the first time, for them to take a trip. A lot of us are in the band following the footsteps of our older brothers and sisters who told us about the inaugural parade for George W. Bush and Barack Obama. We've been hoping to march in the Joe Biden parade. I feel like I'm missing like being a part of history because Baloo always was able to to march in a, the inauguration parade, and I feel like I'm missing out. But every January, the Martin Luther King parade comes through our neighborhood like last year. It's boring now because like you can't make that sound no more. You don't you don't hear that sound no more. It's just. You don't see them no more. It's like another party gone. My hope for the future is being able to march again. It never gets boring. It never, I, I never underestimate the parade. No matter what the weather may bring, uh, we will definitely be there to represent our school and our community. 
There is no parade in 21, but we'll be back at you at 22. I am Armand Thorne. Countdown to the inauguration, and ABC 7 News is the only local news team with exclusive stories that will shape this historic day in every newscast, online, at the ABC 7 News app. ABC 7 News, on your side. You got her? I got her. I'm getting a sweet McDonald's. There's a meal for every morning. Now get any size iced coffee for 99 cents until 11 a.m. After weeks of sheltering in place with little movement and exercise, you may be experiencing leg pain, leg fatigue, leg cramps, or you may have a hard time walking. The Minimally Invasive Vascular Center in Laurel can help. We are internationally recognized for treating patients with poor circulation caused from high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure, or increasing age. Call us today or visit MIVCMD.com for more information. Stay healthy and stay safe and let us help you get moving again. Get your Amazon packages securely delivered inside your garage for protection from... Yeah, all that. PN Garage Delivery is safe, contactless, and of course, convenient. Shop, order, and receive Amazon packages inside your garage. It's that easy. Learn more at Amazon.com slash key. You're working hard to keep your business moving forward. With Compulse Integrated Marketing, you can reach new customers and get results. We work with businesses across America, but we have experts right here. There are new ways to reach your customers with video, digital, and social advertising, and we're experts in all of them. Our solutions are affordable, and they work. Compulse Integrated Marketing. Reach new customers and get results. Contact us right now. Let's partner together and keep your business moving forward. Guys, breakfast. I'm leaving for McDonald's in five seconds. There's a meal for every morning. Right now, get a classic sausage McMuffin with egg for just two bucks at McDonald's. ba da ba ba, -ba. ABC7 On Your Side wants to give you $6,600 just by visiting WJLA.com and entering to win. One nationwide winner will get a great start to 2021 with an extra $6,600 in their pocket. Thanks to your friends at ABC7. Well, even before the assault on the Capitol, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser found herself plunged into the middle of history. Yes, Denise, after federal officers attacked peaceful protesters so that President Trump could do a photo op, the mayor established what is now called Black Lives Matter Plaza, the spot where a protege of Dr. Martin Luther King made his last public appearance, that is Congressman John Lewis. It was uh, among some of the most difficult uh, times in Washington. Certainly people around our city and the world saw what happened to George Floyd um, and saw a man killed on the street by a police officer. And the reaction, um, I think, for many people was guttural, emotional, raw. Uh, and uh, the time for them was, and for all of us, was to say this shouldn't happen in our country and how can we commit uh, to to reimagining um, safer communities. And uh, that has certainly been a topic for discussion, not just this year in D.C., um, but really over the last uh, 20 years. Um, what we see in the nation's capital, though, uh, is that a lot of the frustration from around the country descended here. Uh, some of it positive, some of it not so positive. Uh, and to, to throw fuel on the fire, uh, was a president who used just extremely heightened racialized rhetoric uh, and uh, the United States military. So uh, I think that we saw a, um, we just saw crashing together of all of uh, these heightened, serious uh, issues uh, and it came together in the streets of Washington. And Mayor, you were sort of caught in the middle of a storm. I mean, when you, when you think about it in some ways, because um, you know, uh, you had to have the D.C. police deal with this, this stuff. You're talking about the military. Uh, you even had 
some talking about taking control of the Metropolitan Police Department away from the city. What are your thoughts? Was, was it a was, scary time for you? or? Uh, it was uh, an unbelievable time. Um, and I, I think, Sam, what we just did was we came together and we put all of our best minds at how to attack this issue. Uh, and we did. And uh, we had to stand strong um, against uh, a president who wanted to use D.C. as a prop uh, or as a stage to send a message, we think, to the whole country. And uh, I, I stood up for D.C. residents, stood up for the First Amendment, um, but I also stood up for our autonomy as taxpaying Americans. And uh, one thing you did was you painted um, Black Lives Matter on 16th Street. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was just saying, I'm from Kansas originally, but the closest big city is Tulsa, Oklahoma. I went out to Tulsa, they have Black Lives Matter painted on mm -hmm. the street. A number of cities do. What, are you, what, what about that? Well, I think that um, art uh, has always been used to express what's happening on the streets. Uh, and we have a wonderful arts program in, in D.C. where you can go to all eight wards of Washington and see wonderful expressions of uh, important Washingtonians, of music, of, you know, arts icons all throughout Washington and we had we had a very real job to do on 16th Street uh, there literally were um, unidentified federal forces that had taken over our street um, blocked it off uh, would prevented DC residents from accessing um, the street uh, and there were also thousands of people in Washington and coming to Washington uh, to protest um, so Black Lives Matter Plaza both helped us reclaim that street um, with a beautiful art piece, but it also provided a central and common place for people to come and redress their government. And you, um, it also took off, as I said, in other places. What do you think about that? I mean, that, that there's Black Lives Matter in Tulsa and, and Toledo. I don't know wherever, but it's, it's around the country. Well, we're, we're certainly um, flattered by it, but also recognize that all of those communities that um, also used art for a centering place um, also, like us, know that it, it represents a lot of work that we have to continue to do. And you also took John Lewis over there. That was uh, probably the last event public appearance that mm -hmm. he made before his mm -hmm. death well, tell us something about that well you know i got a chance to meet and spend some time with john lewis on a pilgrimage that he hosts uh, to selma and I, I hadn't spent any time with him before that but it was such a special time where i i saw in him then and that was a couple of years uh, before he died that um, he believed in young people. You know, I'm not as young as I used to be, but he believed in passing the torch. Uh, and he believed in pouring into young people what he learned. Um, and he was committed not uh, to let us forget about the sacrifices um, and our responsibility moving forward. And he was, um, he was in Washington and he was on his way home and he he called us and said he wanted to see Black Lives Matter before he um, before he went home, and so I met him on a Sunday morning. He was just as gracious and genteel, um, and very sweetly he looked over to the Hilton, which is right there at, at 16th and K, um, and he says to me, "I stayed here um, just before I spoke on the March on Washington." And it was just a little nugget, a little tidbit of who he was and what Washington um, meant in his journey. So I, I'm very grateful personally, um, but I'm also on behalf of Washingtonians grateful that that um, image of John Lewis and Washington will be part of history. And then uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up, um, Donald Trump, I remember about Four years ago, this month, almost yep. last week, we followed you up to New York yep. to the Trump Tower, 
and you had a meeting with Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and you came back, and you seem to be, you know, pretty mm -hmm. optimistic. You know, yeah. uh, I guess the mayor of Washington meets the president-elect. Yeah. And generally, over the years, you all seem to get along pretty good, you know, mm -hmm. and given, and then it just fell apart with this uh, during these protests. It was just like, obviously, you know, it seemed like you stopped trying to be friendly. <laughs> Well, you know, my job, as I said then, and I, I say again today, my job is to work with the President of the United States, no matter who it is, um, as the Mayor of Washington, D.C. And that is, even though I was quite devastated by Hillary Clinton's laws, you may remember that, uh, he won. And uh, my job was to figure out how to work with him. And uh, I saw him as a blank slate that we could uh, try to you know, have a beneficial relationship. And I, I, I approached uh, our relationship like that. And I, I'll continue to do that until he leaves office. White film, locked in history. Today, as we continue our celebration, we're going to see Dr. Martin Luther King in the living home. To this parade today. Of all forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. It's time for the lowest prices of the season on the new Sleep Number 360 smart bed. What if I sleep hot? Or cold. No problem. With temperature balancing, you can sleep better together. Can I help keep me asleep? Absolutely. It intelligently senses your movements and automatically adjusts to keep you both effortlessly comfortable. Will it help me keep up with mom? You got this. So you can really promise better sleep. Not promise. Prove. Don't miss our weekend special. Save up to $1,000 on new Sleep Number 360 smart beds, plus 0% interest for 36 months and free premium delivery when you add a base. Ends Monday. There is a new day on the horizon in Delaware. Filled with opportunity, renewal, Innovation, moments to refresh the body and soul as you explore new places to live, work, or visit. It's yours to discover in Delaware. Begin your journey at discoverdelaware.com. Staying safe and healthy. That's the common objective on everyone's mind right now. As an essential service provider, we will continue to provide you heating, AC, plumbing, and electrical services during these trying times. John C. Flood has always implemented the highest standards of health and safety, including using gloves and shoe covers. And we're now also practicing social distancing, stringent sanitizing, and more to keep your family safe. To help, we will waive the diagnostic fee if you go with all the recommended repairs on services. John C. Flood, your trusted provider for over 100 years. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Health insurance enrollment ends January 31st. Don't delay. Enroll today at dchealthlink.com. Riverdale Cole Sprout. Plus, dating the wrong guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> We've got to solve for that. All new Drew. Tomorrow at 3, followed by ABC 7 News at 4. that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow. I still have a dream. Yeah. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Sam, so often when we picture Dr. King, we think of black and white photos from decades ago. But in reality, he was a man just like you and, and others. I mean, a person like myself who really wanted to find ways to make life better, to make America better for families, and that sort of was the essence of his dream. And, you know, um, 
right here in Anacostia, at the Anacostia Museum, I was going through there one day, and I saw this video of Dr. King here in Washington in the uh, 60s, and I said, i got to have it. <laughs> yes, yes. And so yes. thanks to our friends at ABC News, here's Dr. Martin Luther King in living color. At D.C.'s last Martin Luther King holiday parade, among the guests who came to the podium was Martin Luther King III. Because we've come much too far from where we started. It was not his first trip here, but what may have been one of his first was as nine-year-old Marty, who joined his dad in a D.C. parade March 12, 1967. <laughs> This was all organized by former D.C. Congressman Walter Fontroy, then a close associate of Dr. King, who headed up an organization in D.C.'s Shaw neighborhood called MECO, Model Inner City Community Organization, to bring urban renewal to that part of Northwest. And Dr. King was here to help him promote it. Spoke to ABC News. It is to initiate a massive renewal program by far and uh, with the people of this area, the Shaw area, which is an area of great deprivation here in the District of Columbia. I feel that this program, so well initiated by Reverend Fontroy and his associates, is probably the most uh, massive and comprehensive assault on human despair and physical decay ever undertaken uh, by Negroes, ever initiated by Negroes in the United States. Is the purpose of this parade to remove some of the apathy that may be a problem in this area among the Negroes? Uh, very definitely. Uh, when people have been deprived and when they have been left in the basement of the great society, apathy does set in. And this program is a program calling for the Negro to rise out of his apathy and participate in the overall program to renew the whole area. It looked like a fun day. Over 50 years later, residents of D.C.'s Capitol Hill neighborhood would post yard signs, quoting Dr. King as a hope to heal a divided nation. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend, or injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Was Dr. King's era more or less tolerant than ours today? He would be assassinated in Memphis one year and three weeks after this parade. Well, Denise, this is different. Normally we're on a stage and we're talking to an audience, but uh, obviously this time we're talking to an audience as well, but uh, uh, not the same thing. We don't no. hear cheers. We don't hear the bands. We don't hear a lot of things that we're used to hearing. And, of course, we didn't have all those meetings. <laughs> You know, Sam, why do you think about the we had the meetings. <laughs> well, but they were on Zoom. Well, you that's know what true. I'm saying? But that's true. The point is, we used to have, you know, meetings. You bring donuts and coffee. Oh, yes, And yes. we'd sit around and, and all that. And so this year, we were sitting around looking at Zoom screens. Yeah. It is definitely yeah. different. And but it was very tough, you know, making that decision because we knew because of COVID, there was a chance that we might not want to do this, although people were having all kinds of conversations about what they expected the new year to be. But we knew early on that that wasn't going to be the case. And then, of course, now what, what we in the nation's capital are dealing with, it is especially not a time yeah. uh, to have folks and, out. But it, was, it, still, it still turned out to be a great event. I, I mean, as we say goodbye, I want to thank everyone, everyone that helped to make this, this program possible. And I'd like to thank Denise Rolark barnes and our crew and everybody at Channel 7. Thank you for watching. I'm Sam Ford.